Dang, this free agency is turning out to be a wild one. And the Bucks have made some more moves. So, uh, let's get to the show. Uh, what's poppin' y'all? It's your man, Cloud Boy Bales, here with some more fun updates and another episode of Wisco Sports. Uh, so anyways, you know, it, today is the second day of free agency. I, I know it's late at night, so you most, most of you probably won't see this until tomorrow, but the Bucks made a couple moves. Now, we're obviously talking about all the stuff that's been going on. The Lakers have been getting a lot of talk. The Bulls have actually built a super team that can actually compete with teams, so the Bulls are actually going to be a good team this year, so I'll probably get to that later. But anyways, the Bucks actually made a couple moves, some of them actually surprising, some of them I actually, I mean, all these moves I think I, I do very like very much. So, you know, I don't think they're going to be signing anybody else, I think they're done. They could sign some guys, but, you know, their summer league roster is complete, so I think, you know, the summer league has already started. I mean, I'm hearing all this stuff about Mac McClung already. I mean, I've been a fan of him ever since his dunking days. Um, but, yeah, it's it's crazy. But, anyways, there's th the Bucks made three moves. And I'm just going to go over them briefly and how they I think they can contribute to the team, um, which I think is a great thing. So, anyways, um, one of the first moves that I found out about was, so, on the first night, late last night, first night of free agency there was late it wasn't really much talk on it but it's a move anyways we signed Semi Ojale who's a forward he was last on the Boston Celtics he was a former second round pick developed into a basically a rotation player for the Celtics he didn't start games he rarely started but you know 24 starts over his four years in the league or shooting just three field goal attempts in his career and you'd expect from those figures. I mean, he is at Duke, SMU, and he's really known for being a wing defender. I mean, that's what a lot of people know. A lot of people otherwise know him for... So, anyways, if you haven't paid attention to the Bucks before you became a bandwagon fan and we sucked, we were, did make the playoffs two years before we became good and we hired Budenholzer and stuff. We played Boston in the first round of the playoffs one year, and a lot of people have forgotten about that. Um... Basically, he held Giannis to 16 points. Yeah, that's a pretty good thing. To, that's a pretty big deal to hold Giannis under 20 points. And it was in a playoff game, and basically his um, quotations or basically unearned nickname was the Giannis Stopper. And after that, he really hasn't done much. <laughs> but anyways, he's a great defender. From what I've watched him, he always knows how to play good defense, and he is an insurance guy that can be on the wing which is an exact reason why we got him, because he is basically, I think, replacing P.J. Tucker. I think we've seen him shoot corners in the three, and he can also play defense. Though I'm not going to say I think he's very much similar to P.J. Tucker, but I think he's a guy that really has can grow and develop. Obviously, Boston, I don't think, really utilized him that much, but he's a defensive, and he hates, he hits occasional um, three-pointers at times. But you know what? Is no different than P.J. Tucker, and it's not a bag. It, obviously, it is a downgrade, absolutely. But And he's not really getting better on offense, but honestly, if I think if the Bucks just use him right, maybe he will. And I think he's going to get serious minutes with the Bucks, especially with, um, obviously, financials is a big issue, but um, maybe they use the taxpayer to sign him. I don't know. But it's going to be a one-year minimum deal, and I think that's a big signing. So... The next one was one that I actually really liked. I've wanted this guy on the Bucks for a very long time. Um, and this, I think, is a really good deal. Now, this was, we got Rodney Hood forward. Um, he agreed to a one-year deal. And he's another perimeter shooter for the Bucks in pursuit of defending their title. The Raptors are planning on releasing him. And upon the clearing waivers, he intends to sign with the Bucks, according to Adrian Wojnowski. He turns 29 in October, and he's fresh off a season where he split his duties between the Portland Trailblazers and the Toronto Raptors. He was involved in the Gary Trent-Norman Powell trade. So he and Gary Trent went to Toronto, while Norman Powell went to Portland. He's a career 36.7 three-point shooter. He's bounced around a bit in his NBA career. He plays defense. And honestly, I've been wanting the Bucks to make this move for so long. 
He also has playoff experience because he was on the Jazz a couple times before. But it was really before they got Donovan Mitchell. But he was on the Jazz. He's got a lot of postseason success, with especially Utah and Cleveland. He was on that Cleveland team where LeBron nearly took them to a finals and they got swept. But it does. And also the Trailblazers, Trailblazers, where he was actually a real great piece off their bench. Obviously, he took them all the way to the the Western Conference Finals, only to lose, get swept by the Warriors. But then there was another thing in his issue where he got tore his left Achilles the very next year. And, you know, he was doing great things, and then that happened. So, you know, he was very much forgotten. And, you know what? It, that's the thing that happened. The very next year, he was kind of forgotten in Portland, where they had... what. Basically, whatever they had, I think they just wanted to move on because everyone saw how Gary Trent stepped up and Rodney Hood was absolutely useless. So, even though they both got traded together, you know, it was, you know, it's an interesting move. But he was, he didn't really have any use. He was just, he never really was healthy that year. Especially, I think he was still recovering from that injury. But we're going to get him fully healthy up. And I think that's a guy that's going to be really doing a lot because, first off, DiVincenzo is probably going to be still recovering from his own near Achilles tear or whatever. So he probably won't be there to start the season. So I think that's obviously a guy that might be starting in place So of um, DiVincenzo until he returns. But I and I think it's a great move. 3 and D guy. It's just, that's a great move. I like it. And then finally, a surprising move that I think a lot of people did not expect. Because... First off, I think when we traded for Holiday, you know, it was it was one of those moves that were like, wow, we really did it. So veteran, George, yeah, veteran point guard, yes, I I can't believe I'm saying this, but George Hill is coming back to Milwaukee. I am so happy. You know, when we got Holiday, I was happy about it, but the only part of the trade that I was not happy about because of, like three first round picks and yeah, Eric Bledsoe was like, okay, you're fine, but. George Hill was someone that I was upset to see the Bucks get rid of because he was perfect for the team that year in 2019. He shot a high... I mean, everyone knows about the trade. So anyways, um, the routine, basically, he went to the finals with LeBron James in um, 2018, and then the very next season, he was kind of not really playing that much because they Cleveland wanted to kind of move on, so they traded him away. He played out the remainder of the 2018-19 season with the Bucks and was really a steady guy in the backcourt. Didn't really command the team because I think a lot of it had to do with um, Brogdon and um, Bledsoe were really getting the command, and Hill was just there. But he got some playing time, and when he did, I mean, he did show up. And then the very next year, you know, he really did a lot. And obviously... It was a huge deal. He was a huge strike. And, you know, there was a wild cat strike in the bubble, and he was a great help. He always was. But, of course, you know, the salary to get Drew Holiday was the thing. So, anyways, he was off to New Orleans with Eric Bledsoe. New Orleans didn't want him, so they quickly rerouted him to Oklahoma City. He started for them a little bit, but it just was not a good year for him. Wasn't really being healthy. Things were just going, and... The Thunder were just honestly the worst team, one of the worst teams in the league, so honestly, he just didn't play. He eventually got moved to the Sixers to be a backup point guard role, and honestly, that was a deal. A lot of people thought that Philly was actually going to, like, I, a lot, I thought myself, I'm like, wow, Philly actually made a huge trade, and I was really happy about it. And then he just did not do anything for Philly. And, of course, you know, I get why. I get why he didn't. Because honestly, you think I just think it wasn't his role. And honestly, now he's gonna go back to the role that he was doing on the Bucks, which I think is a huge deal. And you know, Dante DiVincenzo is really happy about it. And you know, it's not clear what type of deal he's gonna get. It's probably only one year, and he's only 35 years old. So you know, he probably doesn't have long in the league. But you know, he did miss a number of games each and every season he played, and. Didn't have the outside impact last year that he did have in the Bucks, so that could be a little issue. But from what I know, Hill, I think I've been ahead of this guy, and you know what? There's this. There was a fair amount of drama when we released Hill because everybody was like mad that they did it. But you know, it was like they welcomed Drew Holiday, but they were mad that Hill had to go because of it. And you know what? 
Hill's happy. Hill is absolutely happy. And, you know, I was seeing a lot, Hill um, get uh, follow teammates on sports, so I kind of think I knew he was coming back to Milwaukee. So that's kind of the big news that we've been seeing. Other news that kind of surfaced, um, the Lakers signed a bunch of people, and I mean a bunch of people. Taylor Horton Tucker, um, Malik Monk, Carmelo Anthony, um, even um, uh, Kendrick Nunn. That, that's a lot of people on that team. I mean, Taylor Horton Tucker is obviously the youngest guy but and Malik Monk, but everybody else is over the age of 30. They got like the oldest team in the league. And obviously, I think that's going to be definitely something that, you know, could be a little issue for him. But that's that. Other moves that I saw, uh, Rudy Gay and Hassan Whiteside signed with the Jazz. So the Jazz got some weapons that they can work with. Um, other moves that I saw, um, DeMar DeRozan is on the Bulls. I was, talk I was talking a lot. Of I'm like the Bulls getting Lonzo, adding to Vucevic and Levine, and also signing Caruso to, a do I'm like, that's dominant. I'm like, that's a team that actually can do damage. Now that they got DeRozan, yeah, they're going to make the playoffs for sure. I don't know how they won't. That's a playoff team. That That's probably one of the best starting fives in the East this year. I mean, you got, if you look at the teams, the Bucks, the Heat, and the Nets are my top three teams going into next year. I, I actually rank Chicago. You know, I, I think they're, I'll say they're going to be about a five or a six seed because I think with an experience... But I think they're a team a lot of people need to watch out for. And that's a big deal coming into this. Um, and that's that. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy news. Um, a lot of big bank for Steph Curry. That's another thing. Um, DG Lozada staying with the Pelicans. Also, Tony Snell, former Buck, is going to the Portland Trailblazers. Markeith Morris is signing with the Miami Heat as well. That's another big deal. Um, Patty Mills is signing with the Nets. So now the Nets have one of the best six men. So that's just another oh well signing. Also, James Johnson has agreed to the Brooklyn Nets. So Brooklyn's got another undersized center that they're just going to completely waste. Warriors are signing to Mancio Belizia. Rob, former Buck Robin Lopez is signing with the Orlando Magic. Andre Drummond is signing with the Sixers. Um, Bruce Brown also is returning to the Brooklyn Nets. Spencer Dinwiddie is signing with the Washington Wizards. Shai Gilgis Alexander is getting bank. Um, Garrett Temple is signing with the Pelicans. Um, yeah, that's some good moves. That's some really great moves. Nothing else too good. No word on Kawhi Leonard yet. But, um... That's pretty crazy stuff that we're seeing out of him. So, you know what? We're good with whatever we got. So, I'm just happy with what we have. So, you know what? Um, anyways, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the long run. But, as a Bucks fan, I'm excited because I think we got a, we got a good shot at doing a lot of good other things. I may make a video soon talking about our draft picks. Um, and seeing how they can relate, but I think the Summer League, I think I gotta wait and see how the Summer League turns out, but that's just something we all gotta wait on. So anyways, it's a man, Clop Boy Bales. Stay tuned for more updates, and subscribe below and comment with your thoughts. Stay safe, be smart, and as always, go Bucks. We'll see you next time.